as you know, I, I run a small Ruby conference in the area called Ruby Nation, and I've run the uh, Nova Rug and the Nova Jug for years, like five years already. And I always get talk submissions. Some of them are horrendous. Occasionally, I've gotten a talk submission from people that they submit it, and the talk description is like, here's what I'm going to talk about. And, and there's a file there, and you have to actually download software in order to, un, to look at it and read what the, what the content of the actual presentation is. It's amazing what they do. And uh, you know, sometimes they're, it's very difficult. It takes a lot of work on my part to, to figure out some of them, what they really are going to talk about. Um, and it's occurred to me over the years that there's actually um, some sort of repeating patterns in them that, that are really nice for, for people to put in there. That, and it really boils down to um, a recognition that what you're really trying to do is uh, two things. First of all, you want your talk to get uh, selected. So for the selection committee, um, you know, the, the conference board or whatever, uh, or the, the jug leader or rug leader or whatever. You want that person to be a little bit intrigued by what you're going to talk about and to be interested in it enough to, you know, to want to see the talk. And, uh, so the, and it's the same thing, really, for the people that are reading the program or the people that are looking at the website wanting to decide you know, whether or not they're going to go to the conference. And really what it boils down to is you want it to be similar to what they used to call a, uh, an elevator pitch for your company. You want it to be like something that's 30 seconds or a minute, you know, just a short snippet of what your company does that makes them interested enough to say, oh, yeah, okay, can you send me more information or can I have your card? And you know what the elevator pitch is, right? You get on the elevator with somebody, they're a captive audience, they can't get away. They ask you, oh, what are you doing? You know, and then you have to have something ready. Uh, executives actually hone those pitches down to the word. You know, they practice them in front of the mirror and everything um, to get them right. And they're supposed to be persuasive. And anyway, the, the, the way that you're supposed to do it, you're not supposed to just jump right into, here's all the components of what I'm going to talk about, or here's what my company does. You're not supposed to do that. What you're supposed to do is describe some problem, hopefully a problem that that person has, or an opportunity. And it's an opportunity that maybe that person wants to take advantage of. Um, and then I'll add one more thing for the, the, the concept of talks you know, in general, because we're all engineers, we're curious about things. So if you can just spark a little bit of curiosity in the person and say, all right, well, this is, yeah, that's something I'm kind of curious about, then you jump into the description of what it is. And anyway, I just wanted to point out a couple of them that I thought were pretty good. Um, some of you probably read this one. It even has a cool title. Um, this guy, I don't know, it's sort of like the, the exception that broke the rule or whatever you call it. It's Rock and Fuel Cucumbers. This guy actually submitted this talk to Ruby Nation and we rejected it. So unfortunately, uh, uh, but he went to RailsConf and I was sort of kicking myself the whole time after we rejected him. I voted for it and everybody else for some reason voted against it. Probably not because of the description. It was probably because we had another talk that was similar or something. Uh, but basically what he does is he, he puts, if you read this entire first piece here, he's really putting you in the shoes of somebody that has a problem. You start off going well with your brand new Rails project. Ele everything's elegant. You're gliding through it. The coding's enjoyable. Then all of a sudden, your tests are taking forever, and nobody wants to do them, and you're having all these problems. And then by the end of it, you're, you know you have a problem. Commit now. Find out later if it breaks. And we've all kind of been there. So he's putting you into the shoes of this. And then he has the solution down here. Come to my talk, and you'll find out. And um, the, um, for the, this is a problem one, right? The problem and then the, de the description of the, I'm going to teach you how to get around this. Um, the other types are opportunities, like, well, Android is everywhere. Don't you want to be a part of that? Um, that's a good way to go. Um, Facebook is everywhere. Here's how to do Facebook apps. We actually had that talk at the Nova Rug not too long ago. Um, and then the other one, um, this is a good one for curiosity. It's, uh, it paints a nice picture. Ever wonder how it all works? How Matt sat down with nothing but a C compiler and an editor and ended up with Ruby. And that right there is enough. You know, I mean, the image of Matt's just sitting in his house with nothing but a C compiler. It's like, I imagine stone carving and you know, tools and, and hacking away at it and, you know, and kind of an interesting, I'd like to have gotten in his head at that point and see what's, what's all under the covers. And so from there, he just goes on to, OK, I'm going to show you what's under the covers. And it's enough to intrigue me anyway. Um, all right, so that was, that's basically the point of my talk. It's just to, just to point out, if anybody wants to, to submit a talk uh, description to any conference or to Ruby Nation or whatever, let me know, and I'd be glad to help you make sure that it fits uh, or gets accepted.